Okay, so we're dealing with a rational inequality. In case of rational inequality, the most important thing is what not to do. Cross multiplying would be an option if instead of less than, if, if that was an equal sign. But because this is an inequality, we are not allowed to just multiply by 3x minus 2. The issue is that 3x minus 2 is sometimes positive, sometimes negative, depending on the value of x, right? If x is 10, then 3x minus 2 is positive. If x is 0, then 3x minus 2 is negative. So if we were just multiply by that factor, then for all the x for which the denominator is positive, we would get the right answer, but for all the, all the negative denominators, we would get the wrong answer because we didn't flip the inequality sign. Right? Recall that in case of an inequality, we must reverse the inequality sign when multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative number. So what can we do? There are about five different ways that I know how to solve this problem. What I'm going to show you first is my favorite, my absolute favorite. So the first step here is to acknowledge that x cannot be 2 over 3 x equals 3 over 2 cannot be a solution because it makes the denominator 0, which means 3 we would get undefined is less than 7 over 4. So that's not a solution. Now why is that important? Because in order to gain control over whether we multiply by something positive or negative, we're going to sort of overdo it and we're going to multiply by 3x minus 2 to the second power. That is positive every time it's not zero, right? So we already know that x is not 2 over 3. So we're going to multiply by 3x minus 2 squared, which is for sure a positive quantity. OK, so what we see now, well, what I would definitely would want to do is multiply both sides by 4 to clear the denominators. We could distribute the left-hand side, distribute on the right-hand side, subtract one side, factor the other side, but we do not have to do all that stuff because, because of the method that we're applying. Notice that because we had an extra 3x minus 2, both sides have a factor of 3x minus 2. That's sort of extra. If you feel like dividing by it, don't do it. It could be positive or negative. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to wipe out one side to 0 and factor the other side. Now, if you investigate the quadratic expressions on the left-hand side, you would get 15 times 4, 60x squared. In the right-hand side, we would get 3 squared is 9, 9 times 7, 63x squared. Between 60x squared and 63x squared, 63 is a greater number, so we will avoid negative leading coefficients if we subtract the expression on the left-hand side. So we're going to subtract 4 times 5x minus 4 times 3x minus 2. Now that one side is 0, we need to factor the other side. We have a binomial common factor 3x minus 2, so let's factor that out. Then what's left is 7 times the second factor 3x minus 2 minus 4 times 5x minus 4. So now if you notice that the second longer factor is just linear, so we just need to clean up, combine like terms, and then we have the factored form. Now we reduce the problem to a quadratic inequality in which we're looking for all values of x for which 3x minus 2 times x plus 2 is greater than 0. If we graph the parabola, y equals 3x minus 2 times x plus 2, on the graph of this parabola, we can replace our inequality to 0 is less than y, which is the same as y is greater than 0. So we're looking for the part of the parabola that's positive, that's above the x-axis, that is the chunk to the left of negative 2 and to the right of 2 thirds. Now that we visually found that part of the parabola, we just have to figure out what x values generate those two parts of the parabola. Well, it's either less than negative 2 or greater than 2 thirds, or in interval notation, negative infinity to negative 2 union 2 thirds to infinity. We can check. For example, if you look at the solution set or the parabola, you can easily see that x equals 0 should not be a solution. So if you put in x equals 0, 
the, the right hand side is already 7 over 4, the left hand side is negative 4 divided by negative 2, that's plus 2, that is not less than 7 over 4, close but not quite. And we can also check a number inside our uh, solution set, for example x is greater than 2 thirds, let's do x equals 1. If we put x equals 1 into the left hand side, we get 1, or 4 over 4, and that is less than 7 over 4 and so on. So we can, we can check inside an inequality, we can check the boundary of the inequality. Um, so if you, have, if you have the time, you should definitely check. Thank you for watching.